for me, that's New Jersey, about 12 miles west of New York City, in the USE, no, the USA. Who's here today? From Italia, Lucia's here, Fatima's here. Someone's saying hello from Yemen, but I can't see who that is. It's just going too fast already, us. Is that, oh gosh, I can't even read it. That's Sina from Yemen. Madiha from Pakistan, welcome. Gordana from Serbia is here. Thomas in Venezuela. Hello, Ines from Tunisia. Oh, sorry, Tunisia, South Africa, Egypt. Tanita's here from Brazil. Who else do we have here? Aloha, Susan in Hawaii. Susan, thank you for joining us. Nesrin is here. Here from Egypt, Fatima from Yemen, she said. <laughs> Raman is here from India. He is our rep from Wiz IQ support team. We have Dr. D or Dr. N, Dr. Nelly Deutsch in the house. Bulgaria represented by Slavka today. Virginia Lopez from Buenos Aires. Uh, no sound, Ahmed, go out, come back in. Hello, Abraxas McAndrews. Oh, I think I know who that is. That's our mystery guest from Germany. Everybody's E today. M to the A to the P from Argentina. Somehow I neglected to give a shout out to the VIP Fluency family, original Fluency family. M, A, P, big hello from Algeria, from Nabila and Toronto. That's Dr. Nelly D. <laughs> is that our theme today, E? Uh, we are here today with Kip Boan, Aloe, yeah, not Aloha. <laughs> Kip Boan, who will be uh, joining us in a moment, is an, a really, a really an amazing, uh, extraordinary person. As we see more people coming in, we have Jagoff from Poland. Uh, he is in uh, Austria, uh, originally from the States. He is a, really just a, a fantastic human being, number one. Uh, if you know him from Facebook, he spends a lot of time on Facebook really trying to spread, I feel, wonderful messages uh, to educate, especially about cultures and tolerance and understanding and empathy. I mean, this guy's unbelievable. He would be unbelievable if that was all he did, but that's just the tip of the iceberg if you were in the pre-class chat. As we say hello to Demetrius, Club EFL representing from Greece. Uh, and we have many people from Argentina here. Good. Ahmed is here from Yemen. Kip Boan is the co-creator of Vertlantis, which is a virtual world in Second Life. And he also is, you know, a regular English teacher. He is uh, also an exceptional English teacher who has done a lot on Facebook and elsewhere in terms of forming groups of learners. Uh, he teaches at a school online. He is really just amazing, and uh, he should be here in a second. I told him to wait a couple minutes. I just introduced him, and he should come in. And, um, yeah, meanwhile, uh, how many of you were in the pre-class chat? Let me see a thumbs up if you were able to have time, a thumbs up, a yes, or something. Uh, if you saw Kip's questions, Kip had some questions for you there. Some of you saw it. Some of you had time. Some of you didn't. As you know... The pre-class questions, a uh, great place to go after the class. Uh, that's because some people didn't have time to get there. If you've, see, if you've been in the class, the pre-class chat can be a little more interesting afterwards. Then there'll be a post-class task that we'll wait and post after that. So some of you got in there and saw it. Um, let me just check here. I, I don't think Kip is here. I did tell him to wait a minute. Um, and Abraxas, if you could tell me, I don't think he's come in. I gave him... Uh, permission to come in. He should come in as uh, himself, just right in. I won't have to give him permission. So he should be here in a second. If you don't have sound, Sina, or if there's an echo, anybody else have an echo? I hope that's not my echo. Ahmed can't hear anything. Okay, let's do a little check while we're waiting here. Uh, if you hear me and it's good sound, let's see a perfect yes, thumbs up, something. So Ines, no. But do we have any fines and okays? So that tells me probably it's an individual case. And in that case, you should, yep, in and out. Ines knows the deal. Ines, facilitator from Tunisia. 
Um, sometimes it's a connection, could be on your end, could be with IQ. So as we wait for our guest of honor, who I was just with, by the way, uh, doing a tech check, so he, he is around. So he should be in here in a moment. Um, one of the things that uh, I wanted to ask you, because we're kind of in the midpoint of, of the MOOC. It's crazy, right? Uh, have you been able to see enough classes and watch recordings? Do you, you still need time to catch up? Kip is waiting for 100 people to get here. <laughs> Maybe that's it. You need more time, right? Please do not worry, because I, the reason I'm asking you this question right now while we're waiting no sound Cena go out and come back first of all you do know let's make sure everybody knows there are 24 presenters that means 24 well probably not 24 maybe like 20 21 22 post class tasks now how many post class tasks do you need to do if you want the certificate how many? Four. Now, if you're thinking, why are we talking about this? We already know this. I know, but remember, we have new people coming in. We're keeping this course open. It could be a little confusing. So four or more. Now, true or false, do you have to do four? Do you have to get a certificate, or can you be in the MOOC and you don't get a certificate? You don't have to. Now, if you want to, you do four. And you do them by the end of the course. So there's time. There's time. Prom I promise you there's time. Ah, Kip is here. It looks like Kip came in. Maybe there was a problem with my way. Where is that guy? Kip Yellow Jacket. I see you. Let me illuminate you. Okay. <laughs> There's the mic. There's the camera. Great. There's the tools. Thank you. Hey, there he is, everybody. Everybody, please say hello to my friend, colleague, and everybody. Hello, uh, presenter in ELT Techniques, Kip Boan. Kip, I gave you a link to come in. Maybe it didn't work. You had to do something else. Sorry if that was why you're you're here a little late. But we uh, were... listening. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> We were just talking. I just want to finish this one thing. Just to say, before we hand it over to our, 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 our guest of honor here, well, that's a stupid term for this. It's his class, our teacher. Just to say that uh, there will be time. Please don't worry about having time to do four assignments. Uh, you have until December 20th. And um, just enjoy. Help each other out if you need questions. This is Kip Boan. Kip, I, I talked a little bit about you. I just, uh, you'll see maybe in the recording later, I just mentioned uh, all of the good things you do, especially in Facebook. Uh, I feel to, to spread the good word, not just about English, but about communication, social media, empathy, uh, peace on earth in the best possible sense of, of, of the term. So uh, besides that, I'm going to let you introduce yourself a little bit. And I'm glad the pre-class task was uh, dynamic. Good stuff going on. Yeah. And I'm just going to stop here. And if you need me, I'll Sounds come good. back in. Just give me, just, just tell me to come back and I'll come back. Uh -huh. Okay, appreciate it, Chase. Thank you. Well, this is exciting. I can tell you that. This is my first MOOC, guys. So, uh, uh, really, a first time experience for me. And I can tell you it's great uh, seeing that countdown page before you come in. It's like, uh, like, like a sports event or something. Like you want to come into the arena, you know, you're ready. The game's about to start and the countdown's ticking away. It's really uh, something amazing. Um, everybody should try with IQ. I, I definitely recommend that. Uh, it's an awesome experience. My heart is pounding. I can f feel the passion in my blood. You know, it's just going. Um, we've got lots to do, lots to talk about. Uh, but first, I'd like to get to know you a little bit. So um, I'd like for everybody in chat just to tell me where you're from uh, or wh where you're at at the moment, perhaps is a better question, because I think uh, people are from all over the place and, and, and different countries at the moment. Wow, Yemen, okay, Egypt, Argentina, Spain, Italy, Bulgaria, USA, Poland, Algeria, Russia, Turkey, Hawaii, Greece, Romania, Pakistan, the US, Ukraine, Mexico. Man, this is unbelievable. It's really interesting because the, uh, wow, it, the countries just keep coming. Another one from India. Um, the, name of this, uh, title, the name of this class is actually Come Speak with the World. 
and uh, <clears throat> because that's what you can do with Verglantis and with Second Life. And arguably, you can do that with WizIQ too, um, as you can see. So the, the world is basically here with us. Uh, and, and I am speaking with the world, so it's, it's really an amazing experience. Okay, uh, good. Uh, let's deal with a few pre-test, uh, or pre-class, I should say, pre-class questions. Um, Germany too, nice. Uh, I'm just curious, uh, how many of you have actually been uh, in a virtual world? Uh, could you simply give me a yes or no in chat to let me know? Have you ever experienced a, a virtual world in any way whatsoever? Thumbs up, some yeses, a few noes. Second life, okay. All right, somebody, okay. 2006, nice. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, let me ask you a different question. I'm curious about Verglantis. How many of you at the moment um, feel, like, feel clueless about Verglantis, like you know nothing about it? Um, just give me a yes or no. Clueless. Are you clueless? Okay. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Good. Okay. Good. I'll keep talking. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, with Second Life in Verglantis, it's, it's such a huge topic that it's very difficult to know even where to start. Sometimes I feel so overwhelmed whenever I'm you know, dealing with this topic. It's like, you know, where, where, where can I even begin? Uh, I'll start by just giving you some information about myself, perhaps. That's probably best. Let me see if I can pull up a different uh, PDF for you. Uh, one second here. I need to scroll a bit. Um, so here's, I'm cheating a little bit. This is my, my visual CV, um, just to, to give you a bit of information about myself. Um, I'll make it so that you can download this way if you want to. Um, I'm basically in a very small town at the moment, uh, in Svetl, in, German, in Austria. I said Germany because I used to live in Germany as well. Uh, I've lived in a total of six different countries. Um, I'm originally from the United States. Uh, and I'm from a small town in the United States called Washington. And I'm emphasizing this, this small town, um, uh, the, the fact that I, I've been living in small towns, to show you, uh, to, I guess, um, to make clear how, how incredible it is to uh, be able to speak with the world like this, with WizIQ, and also in a, in a virtual world environment like Verglantis. I find that amazing. Um, yeah, small town boy. Not Washington, D.C., uh, the so-called original Washington, or Little Washington, and the, uh, the over the bridge into Little Washington reminds you of that each time. Uh, it was founded by uh, uh, the, the former, the original um, George Washington. Um, that's why it's called Little Washington. But uh, in any case, yeah, I find it, you know, when I learned the first language that I learned, which was French, um, I only had textbooks to work with. That's all. Um, and I didn't, we didn't have the internet. That, that makes me look old, I guess, or feel old. Uh, but that was the case. We had no internet. There wasn't much computer activity, uh, just textbooks, right? And then I had the, I was lucky enough to be able to go abroad and spend some time with a, with a host family. And that was uh, an incredibly uh, immersive experience. Uh, I was forced to use the language. And um, arguably, that's what a virtual world also requires you to do. Uh, you get in there. Uh, you confront the language in so many different ways. Uh, it is the meta language. That means it's the language that is used uh, throughout the. It's like like the like English being the global language, so to speak. In in, in the so-called uh, real real world, uh, people refer to English as being uh, the, if not one of the, uh, global languages. Uh, and the same is the case in, in virtual worlds. Okay, uh, I'll pause for a second and see if there's any questions for me. Um, anything you want to know? Okay. A little bit of background information on Verglantis, perhaps, because I saw in some of the questions, um, some of the questions that I got in the in the pre-class uh, task were related to that. Uh, people ask about you know sponsorship, who's behind it, for example. Uh, my wife and I, we have a language school in Germany. Um, that's what brought me back to Germany. I studied in Germany when I was uh, at university in the U.S. for one year uh, abroad, and then later I came back to Germany. That's where I met my wife. Uh, we lived there for about nine years, and that's where we have a, a language school. Um, and uh, so basically, the Oxford School has act acted as one of the main sponsors uh, for Verglantis um, since 2000, uh, 2006, uh, so since its creation. And um, we also get donations, of course, from community members. Um, so it's not all from the Oxford School. 
uh, anybody can can donate to those if they want to, um, and uh, that's basically how it is uh, it is funded. Uh, it's not cheap uh, to have uh, the islands that we have. We have two locations at the moment in Second Life, two islands as well as a couple of uh, outpost locations on other islands, thanks to uh, um, uh, generous uh, uh, locations like Edunation, uh, Talk Um and uh, we're also at in, in Avenation with a with a location. That's something that we're not making a lot of use at, uh, use of at the moment, but we plan to in the near future. So we're we're sort of widespread. You know, we've um, We've got a lot of history in, in Second Life. I think most people who know, um, who do have anything to do with language learning in Second Life know Verglantis. Uh, if not, then they uh, arguably uh, are, are missing something. Um, so yeah, let me keep going so I don't get off track. Like I said, this topic is so, uh, so huge that um, I really have to uh, have something to, to look at to keep me going. Let's see. Um, yeah, so just a, just a few... Um, pictures here. I want to make sure that this is big enough for you. Um, I'm going to show you a few images of Verglantis just to give you a first impression, and then we'll start to get into detail. I have some talking points um, planned, uh, and these talking points were actually compiled a couple of years ago, but most of the points are still very, very, very relevant. Rel uh, sorry, very relevant. Um, so we will get into those after we sort of talk about Verglantis uh, in, in general. Um, so here you see an overview of the sim, for example, or the island. I'll type sim here. Sim is, is like, a, like a short form of simulator. And um, yeah, as you can see, uh, in my opinion, it's, it's, really, it's really beautiful. Um, this is only one of our islands. This is called Knowingly. Uh, our second island is called Paradise Island. And um, we really make an effort at Verglantis to keep the environment nice and relaxing and informal. So we're, we're not a school. Um, we're more of a, a community of, um, of a practice, you could say, uh, language learners and language teachers together from all over the world to practice all sorts of uh, languages. Um, uh, I here in Wizards IQ is using German. Um, so as you can see, we. Um, yeah, just like here in WizIQ, also in Verglantis, uh, it is a multilingual platform and a multilingual community. Uh, so we use different languages, um, and we also learn different languages, learn and teach different languages. Uh, anybody, I'll keep scrolling down so you can have a look at another picture. Uh, anybody can come and offer an activity uh, at Verglantis. So um, there is no bureaucracy as far as that's concerned. You don't require a certificate. Um, Basically, the way we see it is that if someone's willing to come and help somebody out, uh, that help is welcome. Um, and uh, I mean, if, if I had had the chance uh, when I was uh, 15, before I went uh, to France for a year, if I had had, had the chance to uh, meet with a French person regularly to, uh, to practice French, uh, man, I would have been heaven, you know. Uh, wasn't the case for me. Uh, I had to actually go to the country. Uh, in my opinion, virtual worlds represent the next best thing to actually going to uh, a country. Right, in ways, right? Uh, obviously, video conferencing is also very nice and also immersive. Um, but uh, as we will get into <clears throat> during the class, um, there are certain things which virtual worlds offer which we don't have via video conferencing and which we don't have, arguably, uh, in, in the classroom even. Okay, let's see. I'll keep going down a little bit. Um, there are a number of, um, uh, what you're looking at here is basically uh, a book. It's a kind of um, tool that we use for giving some information. Uh, this is at the info point in, in, at Verglantis at, uh, on our Knowingly Island. And uh, this basically gives you a very brief overview. Um, it's the same information from the website, so from the main, uh, main page on the website. Uh, so you have a general overview, a general description of Verglantis, and then you have a few red dots that you can click to go to different locations on the island. These maps that you see here uh, on this book are actual representations of uh, our islands. Uh, and these were created by uh, a person uh, called Emir. Um, I would like to go ahead and give him the shout out. Uh, Emir is his second life name. Uh, I'll type it here for you. And this guy is incredible. Um, he has really helped to add a lot of beauty uh, to, to Verglantis. Um, so a lot of the landscaping, a lot of the, a lot of the work you see there, a lot of the, uh, the, the builds are his own. Um, the guy really has, uh, has, an, has an eye for beauty. Um, and uh, 
I'll go to the next picture just to keep keep it going, keep it interesting. Um, this is just a another location of, on the same island. It is actual an actual um, activity location. Fifty of these at the moment, so different locations uh, or social spaces uh, which could be used uh, for learning activities. Um, and uh, uh, these these activities are extremely um, uh, how should I say uh, flexible, so we can change them up uh, anytime. If we don't like the furniture we have there, we can switch it out. Um, everything can be moved around and, uh, and switched out. Another thing to keep in mind is that everything that you see in these pictures uh, was made from a what's called a prim. And I will type that word here in chat. A prim is basically like a, a building block. If you can imagine a square, uh, a basic building block uh, in second block. And now imagine that. Everything you see, these pillows, um, you know, these chairs, these books, everything was built by someone, either within the virtual world or outside of the virtual world using a 3D software called Blender, for example. There are many different kinds of software you can use. Um, so what you also confront in, in Second Life, uh, in addition to language learning opportunities, are people across the world who are incredibly creative and uh, also very smart. Yeah, so you've got a lot of interesting people uh, to uh, to deal with, um, in my opinion. Let's see. I'll keep going. I think I've got one more picture here, just to show you. Um, yeah, this is uh, also right in front of the info point. This is at uh, our home location. Uh, we have a home home spot on on knowingly at the moment, so people can come and hang out. Uh, that's in addition to our different activity locations. So if you're not in an activity, you can simply come here and hang out. And to be honest, you can go anywhere. So uh, it's not like you can only go to an activity location when there's an activity. Uh, you can go anywhere. See somebody here is talking about how relaxing it is to be in Second Life. Uh, I think that's because of the environment as well. It helps to relax you. Uh, the, the fact that you have an avatar, you can go in um, and express yourself uh, through the avatar uh, really helps you to relax. And the environment um, in general can be extremely relaxing. Uh, we bring in music, for example. We stream in music um, uh, from, from Shoutcast, a free stream uh, from Shoutcast. Uh, and it's always relaxing music, so uh, ambient music, uh, uh, relaxation, meditation music, things like that. Uh, so the, the theme or the focus of Atlantis is to really relax you uh, and to keep everything very informal. Um, uh, yeah, let's see. Um, the next PDF that we're going to look at uh, starts to take us into more depth. Um, and I'll just click it. And uh, before you even look at it, it's loading now. Um, Okay, sorry, we're not quite there. Um, we're on the website, that's okay. Um, I've got a few screenshots of the website just to give you an idea of what it looks like. I, I suspect many of you picked it out. Uh, this is the front page of the site. Um, gives you a, a brief description of, of what we're all about. Uh, something to mention about for Atlantis, um, some people ask uh, where, where the name is from. And uh, it's actually, actually wordplay uh, using three different words. Um, I'll type those in chat so that you can really see them. Uh, virtual, um, virtue, and Atlantis. And um, yeah, there's there's some virtue in it uh, as well because the, the goal is to bring people together as well, not just for language learning, but also for intercultural understanding, for bridging cultures, etc. Um, so that's that's really a, a big part of the message. Um, and uh, I think you know language learning gives us a good reason to do that, if you know what I mean. Uh, so that's where the where the name comes from. Uh, some quick uh, information about the logo I, I also find uh, interesting. We actually found, right, I, I think it was my wife who found it. Um, in North Carolina, we went to the beach, that's where I'm from, and uh, this was at the time we were working on a digital uh, storytelling platform, which was the old Verplantis, um, and uh, we uh, were, were thinking about logos and stuff, and, and we actually found a shell, if you can imagine this, a shell in the water. And this shell had the exact, you'll see this later, I think, in a the shell has this exact V, right? Exactly as you see it in the logo, was on this shell. So for me and for us, it's like a, like a message, um, and we decided to to use that as the logo. It felt right, and uh, so that's that's why we use that logo now. Um, okay, let me just go to the next PDF. Um, please forgive if I'm you know ignoring anything in, in chat. Um, if you try hard enough, you'll get my attention. Um, there's just so much to cover, so I, I'll just keep talking for now. Um, let's see, yeah, here's uh, the What is for Atlantis page. You've got a little bit of additional information there. Uh, you can look at that later if you want to. 
This next page here, and I'll try to make it bigger for you so you can see it. Hope that's not too big. Um, this is the activity calendar. And um, yeah, let's see. This acti activity calendar is extremely important because this is how you find out about the activities, uh, where they take place, what time they take place, who the activity organizers are. And as you can hear, the, the language that we use is very informal. Um, so we're trying to get away from using words like teacher and student. Um, and there's a reason for that. Uh, I also personally see a shift in education, moving more toward uh, teachers becoming facilitators of the learning process and calling themselves facilitators and seeing their role changing uh, in that respect. Um, and uh, we very much like the idea of, um, of everybody having something to learn and everybody having something to teach. Uh, so there is, in that sense, no, no hierarchy, um, and uh, everything is on a level playing field. Um, and uh, so we, we refer to the teachers who offer activities at Atlantis as activity organizers, and the people who participate in the activities are called activity participants, right? Okay, so if you click these, these activities, this is Google Calendar, basically, and we actually have this in the virtual world um, uh, integrated in a tool that you will later see, I think, in a picture. Um, so you can see this in the virtual world as well, which I, I find fascinating, to be honest, that, that we can do this type of stuff. But you see, you can simply click uh, a name. So, for example, if you're interested in French for Beginners, you can click it, and you can get a, a description of the activity, where you need to go, what time you need to be there, etc. Okay. SLT is something, this acronym SLT, is something that you need to be familiar with. Uh, right. <laughs> um, Second life time is what it means. That's U.S. Uh, Pacific time. Uh, I'm speaking too quick. Ah, I'm glad you said that. I'm very glad you said that. There's one reason why I'm speaking too quickly, uh, because I have so much information to cover. So I really want to try to give you as much information as possible. You will have the recording later. And good news, I am planning to, to do this again later, to, to make another presentation specifically for English language learners. This means I will slow down. I will use different language, right? That's right. So Jay already sees it, right? So I want to do that. I want to slow it down for, for English language learners. But today I'm going to speak quickly. Uh, please go back and watch the video if you want to. If not, then uh, uh, we can do it again soon. Yeah, we'll have another presentation. OK, or another, another class. Um, OK, so this is the calendar. Very important. Um, it's, we keep it up to date all the time. Uh, I get lots of help from another person I need to give a shout out to. Uh, um, that's Martina Tsaina, and, and her, her name in Second Life is Abraxas McAndrews, and she really helps me to keep the, the calendar up to date. So you can always go, uh, go here, and it's almost always up to date. You know, we're human, we can sometimes make an error, but for the most part, it is up to date. Uh, good. Also, below the calendar, it's important to notice that you have information about how to go to Verglantis, right? So what you need to do. You need to install some software that's called a viewer. I will type that for you. There are many different viewers that you can use to go into Second Life. It's like a browser, right? Like we have a browser to go into the internet. You have a viewer to go into, into a virtual world like Second Life. Uh, we per personally, uh, I personally recommend Firestorm, and that's uh, what we recommend on the website. Uh, so that's something that you should think about. That's on our download page, by the way. You can find the link very easily to that. Okay, and of course you need a Second Life account before you even do that. So you need to go to the Second Life website, which you will see in a second, uh, and sign up for an account uh, before you can uh, use the viewer, because you need the username and the password that you get. Okay, this last, uh, or next to last uh, page here, uh, or PDF here, is a, uh, an overview of the different activity locations. As I mentioned at the, at the beginning of the class, uh, we have two islands, Knowingly and Paradise Island. And then we have these output locations at EduNation uh, and also on Forum Europe. I think I said Talkademy before, but I, I, think that's, uh, I think the name is associated with Forum Europe. Um, and then we have uh, a, lo a location in Avonation. Avonation is a completely different virtual world. Um, so that's something that, that you might need to look into. Um, we have a location in Avonation called Serenity. That location is a little bit special. We're planning on doing different things. Um, uh, slightly different things, at least. Uh, in, at, for Atlantis and Second Life, it's it's very open to the public. Anybody can come and participate. Uh, very unbureaucratic. Uh, you simply come and, and let us know that you're interested, and, and you can come to the activities. Um, on Serenity, on in Avenation, we are planning to help um, schools, for example, 
and anybody who is interested in having uh, a more closed uh, and private project. Uh, we have uh, the island divided up into, into four different uh, sections, and uh, those will be private areas, and the idea is to help facilitate uh, such projects in the future. So if anybody is out there uh, who might be interested in such uh, things, just let me know. Um, also regarding Verglantis, let's see, I'm almost on the last, uh, on the last slide here. Uh, regarding Verglantis um, and time zones and activity in general, most of our activities are for people who, or tend to be convenient for people who are in the European uh, time zones, the Central European time zones, but not only. We have people from the US and also people from Asia who come and participate. So it depends, uh, and also Africa, of course. Uh, so it depends uh, what your daily schedule is like. Our goal in the future is to have more activities uh, which are at times uh, which are convenient for people in Asia and Africa. So also, uh, if, if you are somebody who happens to be in Asia uh, or Africa, our islands tend to sit somewhat empty at, uh, during certain times of the day. So what you're looking at now, an incredible resource that's just sitting there. So please let us know if you're interested. You can come. Uh, we'll show you around, give you um, make use of this um, uh, and see it as your own resource, uh, which is a message that we try to really communicate to everybody that it's, uh, this Verglantis does not belong to me per se, it belongs to everybody. Um, it's, it is a community effort um, involving lots of people. What you're looking at now is not something that I built uh, on my own. It's really, it has become something collaborative uh, over the years. Uh, I basically jumped into, 2000, uh, into Second Life in 2006 with my feet running. Uh, because I saw the potential right away, um, and uh, initially we were known as Second Life English. Uh, we were also part of the English Village. There's a long, long history there. And later we had a name ch name change because we didn't want to focus only on English. So once again, we used to be Second Life English. Now we are Verglantis. Um, yeah, this this particular PDF is about how it's free, and I think we've already talked about that. You can donate if you want to, but we also are sponsored by the Oxford School for English. And uh, this last uh, page I want to show you here about the Berglanta site, along the Berglanta site, uh, is um, just shows you how you can start your own activity if you want to, right? We try to make it easy. Uh, so you simply need to come and let us know that you're interested. Uh, give us your name and, and a description of the activity, a very short description. Uh, choose your activity location. Am I frozen? Okay. I'm still okay to some people. I froze for a second, but then I, I saw that my camera became active again. Okay, good. So choose an activity location from the 50 different locations that we have. Uh, tell us when you would like to start uh, us to start advertising the activity. Um, and then basically let us know anytime you need help. That's, that's how easy it is. Uh, we, we spread the word for you. Um, what we do like to, do, to, to see is for, for people to come in and, and to be willing to offer at least one activity for free. Uh, because our, uh, we are about free language learning. That said, all of our activity organizers who offer at least one free activity are also free to come in and offer uh, pay for activities. So if they, uh, if they want to have paid private lessons or if they want to have a small group and, and charge a fee, uh, they can also do that. That's a kind of incentive that we provide uh, so as to encourage people to come and offer free activity. Uh, we are very much about win-win scenarios and identifying win-win scenarios uh, at Verglantis um, so that everybody wins, everybody uh, gets something from it. Uh, yes, okay. Yes, ask me uh, if you have a question. I'll, I'll try to get to it. Um, the last page, yes, uh, all you have to do is contact us if you're interested. All you have to do is contact us if you need support, if you are an activity organizer who is offering something. And, uh, yeah, it's it's basically that easy. We, we try to keep things super easy and unbureaucratic. Uh, I'm going to go to the next tab, but I'll pause for a second and see if, um, if anybody has any questions that I should address right now. Uh, please forgive if I don't see it in chat now. You might need to repeat your question now. The other, I'll yeah, just the other thing, yeah, why don't we wait till the end because what we can do is extend the time okay. if we need to. That's and right. those people who want to stay questions in this um, I'll, I'll also be noting some down so you don't have to, you know, keep your eye on the chat the whole time while you're doing it because it can be a little tough to, to, to multitask. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Chase. Great. Good. Yeah, especially with a topic like virtual worlds and Second Life, it's hard to keep, keep your thoughts together, really, because you can go in so many different directions with detail that it's really hard to give a, a presentation. But this is great practice for me. Uh, I look forward to, to getting better at MOOCing in the future. 
uh, I can tell you what, I'll, I'll be back here on WizIQ because this is, this is really awesome. Uh, what you're looking at now are some screenshots from the Second Life website. I will uh, zoom in, in a little bit, hope it's okay size-wise for you. Uh, this is what you see when you come to the Second Life site. Now, Second is a game, and some people arguably it is. Uh, some people think that real life or first life, what I call first life, uh, is a game. Uh, I personally don't. Uh, it can certainly certainly be fun, but I, I wouldn't call it a game per se. And I think that's basically uh, you can look at Second Life uh, in a similar way. Life is what you make of it, right? So you decide whether it's a game for you or if it's something more serious, right? And uh, uh, we are obviously doing something that is a bit more serious because our focus is learning. That said, we have all kinds of fun elements involved, um, and there's lots of play and lots of uh, you know just through the informality alone and the relaxed environment. Uh, it also becomes a kind of play, uh, or at least a kind of relaxation for people. So just be careful with that perception that Second Life is only a game. Uh, that's also, uh, I think, communicated on the Second Life. Um, so uh, realize that there are people in Second Life doing some very serious things, right? Uh, there are universities there um, and organizations, nonprofits, et cetera, uh, who are actually uh, pursuing some, some very serious objectives. Yeah. And I will give you some examples of, of those later. Um, let me keep going. Yeah, this is the second, um, the second page, second screenshot of the Second Life website. And uh, here you have a video. You can go here later if you want to. You can watch the video about Second Life uh, just to get a little bit of a feel for what it's like, right? Now, one thing, one thing that is uh, uh, a bit um, problematic for some people is that Second Life does require, you know, have certain re computer requirements. So you do, do need a fast internet connection, ideally DSL. Um, and uh, okay, I see some people are having some issues with uh, audio. Uh, can everybody else hear me at the moment? Perhaps only certain people are having issues. Okay, all right, good. Um, okay, yeah. So where was I? Right. So there are some computer requirements, um, some hardware requirements that you do need to think about. And these things really do affect your experience. And this is something that really needs to be uh, emphasized. Uh, I will come closer to the mic if it's low. Uh, try turning up your speakers too. OK, good. Um, the, the experience, the, the first impression really does mean a lot in Second Life, right? So if you go in with a slow computer and a slow internet connection, man, you're going to have an experience probably, because you won't be able to move. Uh, everything will be laggy. Um, so it's really crucial to think about those, those hardware requirements and, um, if possible, to invest in, in, a, in, a, in a better system. Now, I, I don't have an extremely nice system. I have a low-end gaming PC. Um, so it's, you know, it's really, I got this at a, uh, at a, at a store somewhere, you know, not, not a specialized, a specialty store or anything like that. Um, so really a, a basic system is what I have, um, and it, it tends to do well. Um, but it's something to think about. So don't give up on the platform simply because you are not equipped uh, hardware-wise. Uh, think about your hardware. Think about what you can do to make the experience better for yourself. And think about whether it, it means enough to you to, to invest in, in upgrading your hardware. Uh, something to keep in mind. Um, good. This next page uh, or next screen here is just showing you, you a map of different locations. Uh, you can actually access this on the Second Life website. And as you can see, Second Life is much bigger than Verklantis. Verklantis is like one little dot, right, uh, on the planet of, of Second Life, so to speak, um, in the virtual world. There are many, many other virtual islands like, uh, maybe not like Verklantis, but uh, basically many virtual islands or many, many sims are present uh, in Second Life, not just Verklantis. Um, you can see we are mentioned there in the, in the search whenever you type for languages. Uh, we are mentioned a couple of times, actually, uh, in Second Life search. Um, and let's see what we have in the last page. Yeah, that's just, uh, I think, showing Marketplace. Um, you can actually go to a website called marketplace.secondlife.com. Uh, when you do so, you probably will need to quickly uh, change the maturity level, and that's something I'll quickly touch on too. Uh, there is adult content, content in Second Life, but you can you can avoid it. Uh, at Verglantis, we are we have a G rating, uh, so you know you have G, uh, PG, and then and then adult. Uh, and uh, we are a G-rated sim, so uh, there is no sexual content present. Uh, but on the website, you can also uh, uh, confront such content. So it's a good idea when, if you go to the Marketplace website uh, to switch to, to general if you don't wish to be confronted by such things. I see a question about uh, kids. 
Um, this is a very interesting question because the last I checked, I thought that the, the age limit was 16, but I think it's been uh, I think it's been changed to 13. But I need to confirm that to be honest. Um, uh, there is an age verification process, um, but uh, I think what, what I would say if, if if my child were were in Second Life, which you know. Uh, uh, you know, I, I would I would basically say that good parenting is very important, right? The same is true for the internet and also for TV. Uh, you, you confront um, adult content everywhere, right? Even walking down the street, you, you can confront adult content. My son went to the store the other day, a, a toy store, if you can imagine. Walk, walked in and uh, there were some posters of uh, some naked women, yeah? So, for example, you, you, you see that sort of stuff everywhere nowadays. So it's very important to... Uh, to to be a good a good parent and uh, to give good advice uh, to your students or to your to your kids. Um, let's see the last page here. This is showing destinations. This is the destination guide on the Second Life website. Uh, you can basically go and choose different locations uh, if you want to just explore the rest of Second Life. Feel free. Uh, Verglandis is definitely a, a safe place for you to come in, in, in the sense of you have people who have, who are like uh, common interest. And that's something that I think is important in Second Life, to try to identify groups or communities that have a similar interest to you. Um, so if you are a language learner, and if that is your main interest, then for Atlantis, is definitely, definitely a good starting point for you. Uh, also because we offer ongoing support. We do this not only in the virtual world, but also in, um, on Facebook. We have a group there called Verglantis. So it's facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Verglantis. Uh, you'll find us that way. It's also mentioned on the website, by the way. Uh, so you really have uh, access to support at all times. Um, and I think that's enough of that Kip, for now. Just, now. As you can Kip, see, I think, you, you, yeah, I think you and I are on the exact same wavelength. I was just thinking that we've got about 20 minutes and then some questions. Maybe you could jump yeah. to the how pronunciation and listening, uh, how you could benefit either as a teacher or a learner or both because there's right. really interesting things that, that I right. want to make sure you have time for. And we can sure. always do another uh, orientation to Vert Lannis. I think that would be a great thing because there is so much uh, gotcha. to, to talk about. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, thank you for doing that. Thank you for keeping me on track, Chase. Um, like, this topic is so big that it really requires more than one hour. I think we need two to three hours probably to deal with it, to even touch the surface. Uh, to get into um, speaking and pronunciation and things like that, you can ignore this uh, this screenshot for now. Well, actually, I'll flip I'll flip through the um, screenshots, but uh, you can read if you want to. But I'll talk about other things. Um, uh, you basically have the ability to come in and speak at any time, right? With people using an avatar. Uh, if you have a USB microphone, you can come in and with your avatar. You can move around. You can experience the language, right? Um, it's it's very good for uh, not only because uh, and a less intimidating thing uh, to, to experience, um, arguably, uh, when you come into a virtual world and, and speak with people, but it's also good for, for word um, uh, recognition and language recognition because you are constantly confronted by objects and images, right? So things which represent this language. So if I, if I talk to you about, uh, I don't know, uh, for example, um, uh, in, this, in this picture here, if I talk to you about a bookcase, well, this word bookcase is more likely to, to remain in your mind if you're standing there with me and we are looking at the bookcase, right? Because you have a visual representation of what a bookcase is. You're not looking at, uh, a, at a simple piece of paper or a book and you have to uh, know, for example, that in German, Bücher is books uh, in, in English or bookcase or whatever. Bücherregal is a, a bookshelf or bookcase in German. Um, so you have this visual representation uh, constant, and you have this uh, combined with experience, right? So you have more than just an image, more than just a visual representation. You can experience it. You can actually go and sit down in the chair. Uh, you can you can go and you can ride the bike. Uh, you can you know you can fly the kite, etc. Right? So you can connect it with an experience, which I think is very good for the for the brain in terms of uh, remembering things. Um, uh, yeah, this is actually relevant for uh, this next slide is relevant for for um, pronunciation and speaking practice. Uh, you can go to events such as lectures and presentations. Uh, these are very similar to so-called real life like or first life like uh, events, uh, like lessons or, or class uh, classroom situations. You can actually sit and listen to uh, to to lectures or, or presentations by people at universities or or Hedford Atlantis. Um, 
We're actually something uh, just to give you a little idea of, of what we've got, what we're working on at the moment. Uh, in the near future, we're going to have something called uh, virtual world talks, um, and the idea will be to uh, invite people like like Jace uh, and Nelly Deutsch, etc., uh, to come and talk about what they are doing in the virtual world, uh, to record those things, and to put them out there, similar similar to uh, te TED talks, right? But within a virtual world. So that's something that's uh, uh, to use the German word, uh, Zukunftsmusik. Uh, it's something for the future at the moment, something we're thinking about for the future. Um, but that's yet another idea, another chance to, another opportunity to go in and listen to some English or listen to another language, right? Um, uh, another thing to mention is that as we're dealing with people from all over the world, we have different, different accents, right, that they're hearing. Um, and arguably, we are seeing a reflection of the real world, right? Because the real world is not only received pronunciation. It's not only British English or not only standard American English. Um, it is much more complex than that. So uh, in the virtual world, we have a kind of mirroring of uh, the so-called real world. Um, and so for that reason, we hear uh, you know, accents and, and, and different ways of speaking, different language and use uh, from all, of, all over the world. And it's not just chatting. You can chat. You can private chat. You can group chat. But you can also speak at any time, right? You can even do a private uh, conversation, right? So you can actually call somebody within the virtual world, yeah? OK. Um, I'll keep going. Once again, these uh, slides are not necessarily related to what I'm talking about, but I'm trying to uh, stick to what um, uh, to, to the topic, basically. Um, at any of our activities, we tend to have, uh, on average, uh, at least at least six to eight people. Sometimes, of course, more, ten to twelve to fifteen, but at least around six to eight people on average. And uh, these people speak. Most of our activities are spoken uh, activities, uh, so you have a chance to talk and. Most of the time, we have people from six to eight different countries, if you can imagine that. So imagine the kind of sharing that we have going on, the different perspectives. Um, people uh, can learn from each other. If, if I want to know uh, what's happening in Greece or what's happening uh, in Egypt, I have people I can talk to, you know, people who are from there, people who are living there now. I don't need to go to a website. I, I have friends. I have networked with people. I've been in there since 2006, and I've got... I don't know, thousands of, uh, of contacts now, uh, really with people from all over the world. Uh, so great networking potential, yeah? Um, let's see, this is another uh, example of an activity location uh, on our other island called Paradise Island. Um, and um, another thing to mention here, perhaps also not totally related to the image, uh, is the fact that confront the language constantly, not only spoken language, but also written language. Every single object has a, has a description. So if you right-click uh, an object, um, you see a description of the object. That gives you some information, and most of the time it is in English. Very often you get a note card, right, with some details about the object, and all of that is in English. So it is the so-called meta-language of this platform. So it's really almost impossible to avoid um, um, confronting the English language uh, and arguably uh, confronting other languages, especially at Verglantis, you can hear people speaking many different languages. Uh, but like I said, English is uh, the main language which is used to communicate with each other usually. Even on Facebook, in our Facebook group, you will see that uh, we, we constantly, I'll switch slides now, uh, we, we allow, or not necessarily allow, but we encourage, um, is a better way of putting it, we encourage uh, people to use any language they feel comfortable with. So we're not trying to force people to speak English. Um, we're basically trying to give people the freedom to speak whatever language they want to, and we're trying to learn from each other. Uh, so we have, uh, we have people, literally, uh, in the community who are learning several different languages at the same time. I'm aware of people who are, um, who are learning Spanish, uh, who are also learning Italian, um, and uh, who might be beginners or might already have some uh, prior knowledge. Uh, there's really a, a, a wide range of, of, of languages uh, in use. Um, let's see. Uh, any other questions at the moment, guys, uh, related to speaking opportunities or pronunciation? Uh, if not, I can I can mention some other things which definitely deserve mentioning. I need to go to the next. Okay. If you want to learn German, simply go to our website. Uh, we have an activity for that at the moment, and uh, we can we can uh, you simply need to connect. Uh, click the name of the German activity. It's called uh, what is it called at the moment? Uh, I think it's a. It's a, 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 a strange name, a very interesting name. But simply go to the calendar, uh, click click the German looking word there, and uh, 
and you'll you'll get there. And of course, I can put you in contact with the with the person. Um, let me get to the the last slide. Uh, where am I here? Do, 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 do. Let's go some more this way. There it is. And one person I want to mention here, uh, because this is related to uh, phonetics um, and pronunciation. And I'm also mentioning this to show you that, that uh, Verklantis can also be of a serious nature, right, and Second Life can, to show you how this is not just a game. Uh, we also have, uh, among our activity organizers, we have uh, actual professors, uh, people who, who are professors at, at universities. Um, in this case, I'm dealing with, uh, or I'm to introduce you to a person named Vlodek Bar Barbosa. This is his Second Life name. Um, and uh, this person has been active since 2006 in the community. His specialty area is phonetics. And uh, basically, his, his activities are on hold at the moment. He's taking a break. But for, for many years, uh, he offered at least one, if not two, weekly activities where the focus was on uh, pronunciation, phonetics, uh, discussion of the differences between British English and American English, you know, these, these uh, typical um, classifications that we deal with as language learners, as ESL learners, or English as a second language learner. Um, and what you are looking at here is just a very, uh, a very brief, uh, yeah, an extract from a book that he has written. I won't read this to you now because I think that you need to do this in, uh, in basically uh, at home uh, on your own. Um, it's probably not the best time to do this now. But to, to give you just a, a, a brief idea of, of one of the things that he's been actively doing in the virtual world, he has, uh, this is the book, let me find the next uh, page here, if I can find it. I'll talk about it. Basically, he's been doing what's called uh, paving. And I don't think this is my slide. No, this is his book. I don't see the slide at the moment, but it's okay. Um, he's basically been adding phonetic information to objects, right? So I'll have to explain it because I don't see the slide. Um, so phonetic information. So if you click uh, on an object, you get the you know, information about how the word is pronounced. Uh, it's called augmented uh, uh, phonetics, right, uh, for virtual worlds. I would highly recommend uh, that you consider reading his book. I will later um, on the downloads uh, page, or I will post it uh, in, in the, in the post-class uh, assignment, uh, so a download link so you could actually download uh, his book and read it. Uh, it is academic reading, so it's something that you'll need to take your time with uh, to really uh, digest it. Uh, but he really gives a, a very good ov uh, overview, and I think uh, an unbiased, um, uh, an objective overview of his experiences uh, in Second Life and at Verglantis uh, over the years in terms of his focus on pronunciation, phonetics, etc. cetera. Uh, it's okay, Jace. I, I, can, I, can, I can share it later. It's okay. Um, I'll do it in the, in the, post, uh, in the post activity. Uh, now, just to... Uh, let's see. I guess I'll pause to see if there are any questions at the moment because everything else that I wanted to present to you is uh, not necessarily related to um, to speaking per se, but um, I, I, yeah. I, yeah, I think the question, since it's such a new, and I know how you must feel because there's so much to, to show, but I think I can tell from the comments that people are following and those that are interested are going, hey, I know that guy. Um, yeah. <laughs> those that are interested would, would be really uh, into the idea of coming back for some kind of orientation. And I just, I just wanted to say what, what I think um, real quickly is amazing about Second Life for pronunciation and listening uh, because I have a little bit of perspective since Kip is so in it. Uh, what, what I think is so incredible is what he said about being relaxed, meeting people from all over, no pressure to speak English, having the visual representations of objects and things anytime you're there all the time, as opposed to a worksheet in a class, or even uh, a face-to-face -face encounter through Skype or something, because, you know, if you think about, you know, using flashcards or seeing, you know, Zeta Stone or whatever, th there is something very important about having, you know, those visuals. Um, mm -hmm. You know, communicating is good, but having the visuals there at the same time with communicating, hey, that's like immersion in real life or first life. So it's really this incredible opportunity. It's just going to get easier 
you know, better broadband and connection. And I think at the end of the day, what's so incredible is just you are having fun and relax, like we keep talking about. It's it's my, my thing, but it's everybody's thing in this MOOC. Then what happens? Uh, language learning is enhanced, you know, uh, and you know it, the possibilities for improving your pronunciation, listening, and all your skills are just it's just there's no limit <laughs> to it. I think it's really exciting. Absolutely. And I'm glad we stopped on this, uh, this slide, actually, because it gives me a chance to, to talk about it a bit. Um, as you can see here, Jace is on this board here, and this board is actually an interactive board. So what we have here in, in, uh, in the virtual world is also the opportunity to basically make use of the entire uh, internet for the most part. So any website can be also displayed within the virtual world, which I think is amazing. Yeah. So if you click this object uh, there at Proclantis, you'll actually hear Jace's video, right? And this is actually something working on the idea we're working on in the few, uh, that we want to kind of launch very uh, very soon and the idea is to basically this is a kind of dock as you can see uh, and there should be a little boat nearby uh, there will be in the near future and the idea is that you can you can you can uh, it's uh, you can sort of like uh, click for information to kind of like travel outside of the virtual world back into uh, the so-called real world uh, to get information from the internet about about language learning uh, other people are offering uh, language learning activities uh, and, and whatnot. So our goal is to also try to promote uh, other people, free of charge, of course. Everything is free at Verglantis. Uh, so this is something we want to work on in, in the future. Um, so cool. And and uh, so there, I haven't done mine yet. I'm I'm so excited. Honestly, there's very there's very little I'm more excited about than the idea of going in there and and doing a show with my avatar and my my sweatshirt and my, my gear. Um, the other thing, Kip, uh, are you still doing movie nights? That, to me, the movie thing was really cool idea. Right. Yeah, movie night is something that, at the moment, we've got it sort of going on autopilot. So we, we basically put the, um, we have a location uh, which, um, you know, you, when you go there, you'll basically find the media. It's called a media prim. Uh, so a, a video has been loaded uh, to it. And you can basically go on your own. Uh, and sit and uh, a voice is deactivated in that particular area so that you can simply chat with people and, and watch the, uh, the, the movies without interruptions. We tend to choose videos from YouTube with subtitles and whatnot just to give people a, a, an opportunity to practice the language a little bit, to listen to the language within a, a virtual context while communicating with their friends. So it allows for multitasking. So cool. So cool. Questions, anybody? I did add some time. Yes, we have a little extra time. Although I don't really see it here, <laughs> so I don't know what happened. Anybody have a question for Kip about Second Life? And Vertlantis and Second Life specifically? Two minutes. Happy to continue, Jace, if you want me to, where I can stop as you, as you wish. Extended. I, don't, I don't know what happened. I extended it for 10 minutes, and then I don't really see it extending, but let me try that again. Right. Right. Should be okay. I just keep talking. Yeah, okay. you just keep Should going. I okay. <laughs> uh, what, okay. what does the symbol of the hand represent? All right. Well, the hand, I think she probably saw this person. I think it's a she. Uh, the person is a she. Um, I think she saw this on the website. Uh, we are collaborating with, uh, with other communities. One of the communities that we uh, collaborate with is called uh, the Lavender Project, or Feed a Smile. This, once again, shows you how the platform can be a serious platform. Basically, do a, uh, is give live concerts almost every day. If you can imagine, they have volunteer musicians who come and play, uh, and all of the money that is collected, all of the tips or the donations, uh, go uh, to feed uh, kids in Kenya, right? So it's a, it is a legitimate nonprofit uh, based in Germany. All of the documents, it's all well documented and everything. Uh, she she uh, the person who's behind it um, uh, takes trips to Kenya on a regular basis. So that hand. Um, uh, I guess symbolizes a kind of reaching out um, to answer the question. Great. I'm going to keep uh, giving the questions to you. Uh, people want to know if they need to know, have uh, knowledge of software programs and things to, and I'm imagining to build, yes, as opposed to being there, correct? Right. Uh, building is a, a skill that definitely, definitely takes time to, uh, to get good at within the virtual world. It depends on your experience and what experience you bring. Um, if you already have some experience with uh, 3D software like Blender and stuff, then, then you'll probably very quickly uh, pick it up. Uh, I personally am not an expert builder in the world. I have very uh, basic or intermediate skills, I would say, because that's not focus. It really does require time to become 
uh, an expert builder within the virtual world. And because language learning and language teaching is more my focus, um, I simply haven't uh, had a need or, or had a desire to really focus on that or have, haven't had the time, I guess you could say. Um, I'm so happy to have people that, that help us out uh, with things like, you know, building, uh, because uh, if I had to do everything myself, Atlantis would not be uh, what it is today. Kip, the question that keeps coming here is, can you screen share Verlantis right now? And and uh, we could try it. Screen share. Sometimes there's a delay. Uh, I why don't we make that the last thing we do? Uh, and just see if there are a couple more questions first, and then we can you could try to screen share and see what happens with that. Any other questions? Frozen, uh, go out and come back in. <laughs> People need to see it to believe it. I, I, I second that, Dr. Nelly. Kip took me in there and showed me, and I got hooked right away. So, Kip, you could screen share, but Kip is frozen. <laughs> I didn't look to Kip. He is frozen. Uh, Kip, if you can hear us, you're going to need to go out and come back in. It's funny. Uh, presenters, when they freeze, seem to be freezing towards the end, which is a good thing. We had the same issue happen with Drew Badger, I remember. Um, what, what Kip can do, anytime, I'm sure, we can set up another class like this uh, in WizIQ. Uh, he, has a, he has a profile. He can do it. He's, he's uh, one of these teachers I'm trying to bring in to do a lot more with WizIQ, and he's really into it. So that's good. Uh, it looks like Kip is controlling the PDF unless somebody else is in here. <laughs> so maybe he's just frozen. Um, but Kip, I would go back out and, and he's frozen for me too. Yeah. So I'm not sure if he's in here. Uh, here he is. He's scrolling. We just can't hear you, Kip. So if you want us to see you or hear you, you're going to have to go out and come back in because I checked your settings and it says okay. So I don't know what it is. Um, you don't need software installation to get in and do Second Life. Gordana says it's uh, overwhelming. I know what you mean, Gordana, but it's like many things. If somebody brings you and shows you, uh, it's totally different. If you just watch what Kip's doing, um, it, it can feel like that. So the, the other thing is that, um, again, like many things with technology, when the moment is right, um, you can come in and it'll be easier for you. So don't pressure yourself uh, oh, you hear him. So it's just me that can't hear Kip. <laughs> okay, let me ask you, can you hear Kip? I can't. Or see him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've been having this little glitch with WizIQ, so we're going to need to figure out the problem. Um, Interesting. So that means some of you are hearing me and Kip talk over each other. What is Kip talking about? Is he saying anything interesting? <laughs> okay, I'm going to shut up and see if you guys can hear Kip. Well, someone stopped the chat, uh, which is really funny. I guess it was by mistake. So uh, there's not much that we can add to the chat right now. Um, but I can see that uh, Jason's able to do it. He's able to add to the chat since uh, he's one of the um, moderators but we aren't so i hope someone's going to notice that if not it looks like it's going to simply end all right let's see if anyone else is able to know the chat as you can see is now disabled and there's no audio from my end So I'm going to stop the recording for a second and see if things change. Okay, so chat is back. Uh, chat was disabled.
for a while. Don't hear anything. Don't see anyone. So um, I'm still recording. Can anybody see me? And talking. See? To yes? My <laughs> self. All right, so we can ah, hear Jay. Looks like I just talking to uh, with like you support. There's some problems with Kip's controls. I right, can't see so Kip either. Case. Okay, can you see me? Okay, can you hear me? It's like that who the who song. Tommy, see me, see you. <clears throat> Sorry. Okay. Uh, Wow, maybe it wasn't a bad idea that I extended this class for twenty for thirty minutes, which was actually my mistake before. Uh, everything went crazy for me. The whole thing disappeared. I came back. The chat was disabled. Anyway, um, sorry if I'm frozen. Sorry if you can't hear me. Looks like uh, some of us. Yeah, time is up. If you don't come back, leave with a cheer. Hooray! If you need to go, you go. If you want to stay, you can stay. Uh, there will be a recording. And uh, we're making YouTube. We love you. Hope you love us, despite the issues we sometimes have. Kip, we can't hear you, babe. Looks like uh, you're done. It's just about me now, man. Actually, I pushed you out. Hope you don't mind. <laughs> We're going to get Kip back in here. Don't worry. Uh, Kip, the way Kip reacted to being here is just the way I felt when I first got in here. He said he said the same thing when Sylvia brought me in and then I worked with Nelly coming in. It's so exciting. He said his heart was pounding. Uh, he wants to do this again. Um, I could feel it even when we did our little demo class. So, yes, it's over, <laughs> uh, especially because our, our, our wonderful teacher and guide, the co-founder of Vertlantis, and by the way, um, yes, Abraxas, a.k.a. Martina, he's chatting. He says, thanks for coming. Kip is the man. I mean, he really is. Uh, if you know uh, all things EFL, ESL, TESOL, great group. That's Kip's group. Kip has other groups. Kip is all over Facebook, thank goodness, because he spreads really great vibes on Facebook without Kip in our uh, PLN on Facebook. I, I don't know if I can stay on Facebook, to be honest with you. So look out for his, his wonderful quotations on Facebook. Um, you'll see some amazing stuff if you follow him, so please do so. And um, we will bring Kit back to do a, another Second Life Vertlantis. Um, I don't know if I can stay on Facebook, Jay says. Hey, be careful. <laughs> I don't think I have any choice but to stay on Facebook. But uh, I, I don't love Facebook, but I love my family on Facebook. So, you know. That's just how it goes. Uh, anyways, thank you all. Thanks for being patient and being here. And I hope you agree. Kip is, a, is just a really amazing guy. And he's got uh, this, this great platform. I hope you check it out. Go to the pre-class task. And you can chat with him and others about the class. And then Kip's going to give me his post-class task, as everyone, I think, is aware. We do not post those right away. We, we do a little bit of time. You have until December 20th to submit them. And we will have a recording up. We will have a YouTube recording up. And I will make highlight videos uh, for the presenters and for us later, too. So we'll have that. You know, shorter versions, but check out the recording either here or the YouTube video that Sylvia or Dr. Nelly or both make available for us. How about a rap, Jace? Okay, I'll do a little rap to say goodbye. I'll do a little freestyle from the chat box. We got Shaw Key from Yemen, although I may pronounce his name wrong. Fun for everyone, Kip. Now we gotta run. We got Madiha, forget where she's from. The goodbye rap with Dr. Nelly and some others who want to contribute, like Sumatra. She says, thanks to uh, you. I think she means thanks to you. Typos are coming in the chat. I hope you enjoy my goodbye rap. If you love it, cool, give me a hand clap or give me a yes or a thumbs up. And Susan, you're here till we boot you out. She's in Hawaii. Don't you feel sorry for Susan? Dixon, oh, I have to be mixing all the things you say into what I say off the top of the head. It's also called the dome piece. I release stress. Logging out now. Goodbye, Kip. Susan says, wow. No, that was Dr. Nelly. Is there a question from Maha? You'll see it later, Susan, on the beach, not the bitch. 
excuse me, my language, my French, my lips. <laughs> no, I was pronouncing it wrong, but no, I didn't say that. I said beach. It's where you go when you need free. Some relaxing times. That's how we learn better through rhythm and rhyme. Nelly, stop putting curse words in the chat because we want to keep things rated PG. Jaga likes what I do. Is it Yaga or Jaga? I'm not sure. David Schmidt wants to keep talking about bad words, but it's not going to happen. When we say goodbye, we commence clapping. I think that's enough because nobody's giving me any material in the chat box that I can put into a rap and try to rock. If you think it's easy to freestyle, haha, you laugh. It's not. I'll give you the mic and then we'll be gas all over because it's not easy. Bye, friends. See you next class. Peace. Goodbye. That's it. Adios. See you next time. Lots of love. Lots of respect. Goodbye. ELT Techniques! <laughs> All right, it's over. Thank you, Jace. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Kip.